We're going to be discussing operations control and the concepts behind that. Um, the goal today for this section is to give you a, a good under, is a good understanding of what operations control is, um, you know, how it's established, the background, and, and also the commercial model. So let's see here. All right. So first, I want to take a look back at, you know, the last 37 years of, of major releases across uh, the time span from, you know, V1 of, of InTouch, the very first uh, industrial HMI in the world, uh, to forward thinking, process historian, um, the, the powerful OMI release in 2017, and, and now, you know, operations control. You know, that little summary of, of major releases across time really doesn't do it justice with all the technology that really come out uh, within that time frame. Um, but I'm, you know, pretty confident in saying that Aviva kind of is a tip of the spear on 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 these type of concepts as, as they come out. And I mean, even as I look at it, you know, some folks are just, you know, popping up, still trying to, to cram a time series database within a SQL table. So um, now from an operations control standpoint, if, if you were to I'd take a step back and look at this across time with from a higher level and maybe squint your eyes a little bit. What you'll you start to notice is really this is a foundation of of an HMI SCADA experience. Uh, if you were to organize it in in, in three different layers, where uh, at the edge layer um, the users are experience the user experience is is more unique, um, where you know the requirements are more geared around localized interface. Um, you know, experience. So you have typically on the edge layer, uh, distributed OEM skids, um, you know, touch panel, you know, PCs across either the plant floor or the geo space, whatever it is. And, and then as you move up into the supervisory layer, now you're, you're more geared into the control room where users require a more broader perspective and, and situational awareness across the business processes. And then, you know, up into the enterprise level, you know, the requirements of, of users there, I mean, this is where OT converges with IT. Um, you start, uh, you know, embedding operational time series data with, with maintenance uh, analytics and, and inventory management and financial data, power monitoring from a high level, you know, what is your production doing versus, you know, what you're paying in the power bill type of thing. So, you know, this is, um, I think, a good level of understanding from a perspective of history and also the technology that's distributed across the Viva HMI SCADA portfolio um, that's organized in these these now three layers of, of operational control. So if we take a deeper look at at these these core layers and we start to try and identify characteristics of each, um, we're trying to, to to identify, you know, what is the duration of, of focus? You know, what what are the requirements for view at each layer? And what is the architectural convergence requirements? Like, um, I think a good illustration here on the right is, uh, you know, it shows how the edge really is, you know, out there uh, with devices and inter interfacing with, you know, PLCs, instrumentation, you know, whatever it is. And then uh, it, it kind of in a Purdue model approach uh, implements each of these um, core, core packages uh, within uh, different segments of, of your network. So now if we were to, to try and, you know, create a structure uh, for a commercial model, I think uh, Aviva's found a good comparison to be how, you know, Microsoft has matured into the 360 um, model where you essentially select uh, whether you want family, business, uh, basic or standard and, and how many users you want within those packages. And, and then, you know, a different level of, of products are available to you at unlimited use. The same thing with uh, Aviva operations control um, in comparison, right? So we have these three core packages where, um, you know, you get a, a next tier up in access, uh, unlimited access of, of whatever the software is at that tier. And I'll get into, you know, what what's included in the edge package, what's included in the supervisory package and so on. But this is really a kind of a, a basic understanding of, of in comparison on the commercial model as, as it's presented. So uh, understanding that, and we take a look back at what traditional um, software, you know, fulfillment looked like. And, and, and you'll, you're probably already familiar with this um, with perpetual licensing and in that you have to typically purchase the one license for one console 
and uh, resources are really limited to that one console. Um, so they have to go back to that control room to interface with the system. I mean, that I, I think back in times, uh, you know, when I was consulting and I'm sitting in the, the, the control room making modifications on some project and operators are running in and out to see what, what, what the number is after they make adjustment on some pump um, out in the field and running back and forth talking amongst, you know, via radio. So, um, I mean, this is, I think, a, a real life scenario in, in that, you know, this limitation is real. And, and really limited in terms of access points uh, across devices, available devices. Um, whereas uh, a connected worker approach aligns with uh, the operations control concept and expands all these devices to, uh, to that resource. So now that example I just gave where an operator was running back and forth to the control room now can just pull up a mobile device while he's standing in front of the pump and monitor in real time what, what, what the effects of his changes are. Now, if we extend this um, this this user centric uh, approach, we start to identify uh, you know how many different tasks a person uh, or any given resource has uh, throughout their day, um, whether that's accessing the the HMI screen in in the control room, whether that's generating a report or you know performing line changeovers, whatever it is. Um, we come to this example that Aviva is called uh, a, a day in the life where this uh, you know, lady is on her way to work, checking uh, for KPI metrics, just to kind of prepare herself for the shift and maybe prepare herself for anything that she's gonna hit right away when she comes in through the door um, to later on in the day, she's got a line switch over and, and maybe she's at lunch and needs to review some reporting or you know, <laughs> maybe over eager to, to see what's going on back at the plant. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, the basis of the screen here is, is basically to illustrate, you know, there's different tasks, different points in the process along her day and different locations and different devices that are required to connect her to the process and her daily tasks. So how we do that with operations control is we explode access to this resource, to this lady and give her access across the cloud. Um, if she's at the desktop, if she's a mobile from anywhere in the world, she now has the ability to, to, to perform and execute these tasks more efficiently. Now, what's under the hood? Um, I mentioned before, you know, three core packages from three operational layers and unlimited use, but unlimited use of what? At the edge layer, um, this operational, this operations control uh, edge is going to include unlimited use of in-touch and edge instances. So there's no tag limitation, unlimited tag limitation, un unlimited client limitation, unlimited instance limitation, unlimited plant site. There's no limitations. Um, uh, same type of concept with supervisor and enterprise with supervisory, you get unlimited use of system platform, plant SCADA, formerly SciTech, but you get unlimited galaxies, unlimited locations, unlimited clients. Um, and you know, we've, we have some customers that are adopting these concepts early on in the, in the stage. And, and they're really, I think, growing to, to really use our system the way it's supposed to be used instead of, uh, you know, just kind of executing at, you know, commercial limitations. Now. Um, to support these core functions uh, or core packages, uh, we have to have core, uh, common components that will kind of support these packages. For example, uh, communication drivers. You're going to need communication drivers to connect to, to end devices. So, you know, that's kind of going to support the, the HMI SCADA edge supervisory um, type of packages, along with supplemental resources, unlimited use of these supplemental resources like automated uh, reports for automation for operations, uh, data analytics insight in the cloud, um, skills management with the Viva teamwork, uh, unlimited development instances, and, and also you know, system monitoring. And lastly, there are some add-on packages you could add for the manufacturing folks that, that, that are interested in, in looking at MES type of concepts within this type of format and also um, data scientists, if, you know, guided analytics is something that you guys are looking to strive towards. Now, overall concept here is, um, is that uh, you would select here, I can go back and overall concept here is that you select uh, which core package you'd like that fits well for your business. It could be one, it could be a combination of two or all three. Um, and then also provide, you know, how many users uh, your business is going to need. And that, that's all it takes to get started. Uh, from there, we can give you pricing information within the, the, the Flex model. Ultimately, the, the overall concept here is, is connecting your workers, uh, connecting resources, 
using our software the way it's supposed to be used without limitations of commercial structure. 